Well, good morning and welcome to Daily Prayer. Today is Thursday the 14th of July and I do hope this finds you well. Thank you for joining me. As always, we use the form of prayer written by the Reverend David Adam in his book, The Rhythm of Life. We use one of the day's readings and a reflection on the reading. And on a Thursday, the theme for our prayer is community. So we pray. Blessed are you, creator of all things. The heavens adore you. Let the whole earth worship you. Let all peoples proclaim you. Let all nations obey you. <clears throat> Let us serve you in love and in peace. Come, Lord, and rule. Come into our hearts and fill them with love. Come into our minds and fill them with peace. Come into our lives and fill them with light. Come into our days and fill them with glory. Come, Lord, and rule. And the psalm today is Psalm 145. Your faithful servants bless you. I will exalt you, O God, my King, and bless your name for ever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name for ever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end to his greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power. I will ponder the glorious splendour of your majesty and all your marvellous works. They shall speak of the might of your wondrous acts and I will tell of your greatness. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing of your righteous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone and his compassion is over all his works. Your faithful servants bless you. And today we continue reading from the book of Judges, <clears throat> another significant chunk from chapter 16. Judges chapter 16, beginning at verse 4, picking up the story of Samson and Delilah. Sometime later... Samson fell in love with a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. The rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, See if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength, and how we can overpower him so that we may tie him up and subdue him. Each one of us will give you eleven hundred shekels of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Tell me the secret of your great strength and how you can be tied up and subdued. Samson answered her, If anyone ties me with seven fresh bowstrings that have not been dried, I will become as weak as any other man. Then the rulers of the Philistines brought her seven fresh bowstrings that had not been dried and she tied him with them. With men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the bowstrings as easily as a piece of string snaps when it comes close to a flame. So the secret of his strength was not discovered. Then Delilah said to Samson, you've made a fool of me. You lied to me. Come now, tell me how you can be tied. He said, if anyone ties me securely with new ropes that have never been used, I'll become as weak as any other man. So Delilah took new ropes and tied him with them. Then, with men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the ropes off his arms as if they were threads. Delilah then said to Samson, all this time you've been making a fool of me and lying to me. Tell me how you can be tied. He replied, if you weave the seven braids of my head into the fabric on the loom and tighten it with a pin, I'll become as weak as any other man. So while he was sleeping, Delilah took the seven braids of his head, wove them into the fabric and tightened it with the pin. Again she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and pulled up the pin and the loom with the fabric. Then she said to him, how can you say I love you when you won't confide in me? This is the third time you've made a fool of me and haven't told me the secret of your great strength. With such nagging, she prodded him day after day until he was sick to death of it. And so he told her everything. No razor has ever been used on my head, he said, because I have been a Nazarite dedicated to God from my mother's womb. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me and I would become as weak as any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her everything, she sent word to the rulers of the Philistines. Come back once more. He has told me everything. So the rulers of the Philistines returned with the silver in their hands. After putting him to sleep on her lap, she called for someone to shave off the seven braids of his hair and so began to subdue him, and his strength left him. Then she called, Samson, the Philistines are on you. He awoke from his sleep and thought, I'll go out as before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. Then the Philistines seized him, gouged out his eyes and took him down to Gaza. Binding him with bronze shackles, they sent him to grinding corn in the prison. But the hair on his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. Now the rulers of the Philistines assembled to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, their god, and to celebrate, saying, Our god has delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hands. 
When the people saw him, they praised their God, saying, Our God has delivered our enemy into our hands, the one who laid waste our land and multiplied our slain. While they were in high spirits, they shouted, Bring out Samson to entertain us. So they called Samson out of the prison, and he performed for them. When they stood him among the pillars, Samson said to the servant who held his hand, Put me where I can feel the pillars that support the temple, so that I may lean against them. Now the temple was crowded with men and women. All the rulers of the Philistines were there, and on the roof were about three thousand men and women watching Samson perform. Then Samson prayed to the Lord, Sovereign Lord, remember me. Please, God, strengthen me just one more time, and let me be, let me with one blow get revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes. Then Samson reached towards the central pillars on which the temple stood. Bracing himself against them, his right hand on the one and his left hand on the other, Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. Then he pushed with all his might, and down came the temple on the rulers and all the people in it. Thus he killed uh, he killed many more when he died than while he lived. Then his brothers and his father's whole family went down to get him. They brought him back and buried him between Zorah and Eshtael in the tomb of Manoah, his father. He had led Israel for 20 years. So, another tragic part of the saga. Let me read a reflection, and this week they're written by Bishop Gooley. She says, In the illustrated Bibles of my childhood, pictures of Samson raising the temple to the ground had an almost superhero quality about them, providing a terrifying denouement to his colourful story. Now, as an adult, I can't help feeling that the real horror, the tragedy for Samson, if you like, wasn't so much in the final devastating scenes of his life, but occurred while he slept on Delilah's lap, which became a place of betrayal. For surely here lies one of our greatest fears, to be let down by those who claim to love us. And for Samson, the desolation is compounded on waking when he discovers his strength has gone, and God too, it seems, has left him can't escape the fact that the destructive end of the story is a violent one that sits uneasily with our desire for peace. It's a dramatic example of the judge's concern with national pride rather than reconciliation. However, go back a few verses. At the height of Samson's humiliation, when he is seized, blind and bound, what do we read? The hair of his head began to grow again. It turns out that the mark of Samson's identity, which was in his relationship with God, was not removed by Delilah's betrayal. Whatever your story, even at the most painful times, your preciousness is preserved in God's ongoing presence and relationship with you. I love that. Within all of that story, there's this intimate relationship with God that is preserved in, even in Samson. So whatever our stories, our preciousness is preserved in God's ongoing presence and relationship. And so we pray, we begin with the collect. Gracious Father, by the obedience of Jesus, you brought salvation to our wayward world. Draw us into harmony with your will, that we may find all things restored in him, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And we continue in prayer. That the church may show its unity in Christ, that all churches may work together for the benefit of all peoples, that all movements towards unity may prosper, that divisions and conflicts may cease, that the world may find lasting peace that none may hunger or thirst, Lord, graciously hear us. That the barriers that divide may be broken down, that we may live in unity, peace and concord, that we may come to mutual understanding and care, Lord, graciously hear us. And on this day of the week, when the focus for prayer is community, we take time to pray for the community of Purton and the streets that are the focus of prayer this week. Loving God, we thank you for the community of Purton, for all who live here, all who work here, all who serve the community in myriad ways. We pray for residents of all ages, from the youngest to the oldest, those in toddler groups, nurseries and preschool groups, those in our three school communities and all who work in them, the residents of Courses Court Retirement Complex and Purton Manor Nursing Home, and those of all ages in between. We pray for our PCSOs and our local councillors, for those who work at the two doctor's surgeries, the pharmacy and dentists, for community leaders, church leaders, those who work in the library, shops and pubs, for all who help create our community, who volunteer and help others. And this week we pray especially for the residents of Sunningdale Avenue, Moore Park, Hawkstone Court and Hoylake Road, asking for your blessing, peace and protection on those who live in each home. May they know they're loved by you. We pray in Jesus' name. 
Amen. And we pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. God be in my head and in my understanding. God be in my eyes and in my looking. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. God be in my heart and in my thinking. God be at my end and at my departing. Lord, be with us to guide us, within us to strengthen us, without us to protect us, above us to raise us, beneath us to uphold us, before us to lead us, behind us to guide us, ever about us this day and evermore. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me for prayer again today. And I hope that you have a good rest of the day. And if you're able to, we'll be back here for prayer tomorrow at 9.45. Until then, take care. Bye for now.